All right, well, after recording that second video, I had a pretty severe uh, power outage here at home, so yeah, I was able to not actually complete the third video of this series. I ended up losing the second series. Uh, second video I did for the animation and the third video, so I'm going to go ahead and start up 3DS Max again and uh, go ahead and see if we can get it going. Now the problem being is you missed out on about 20 minutes of instructions and I will try to go ahead and condense that down to where we left off at the beginning of the first video. So with that we'll go ahead and let 3ds Max start up here and then hope that uh, we can go and address some of the issues that I had come across. So having the power outage for that amount of time was kind of difficult and uh, we'll just see what else we can do I guess. Here we go. Let's go ahead and continue this. I'm going to make a couple changes because uh, my system was just set back to default and I'll go ahead and get this set up again. Well I'll go ahead and open up the file that uh, I was working on uh, at the end of the first video. Uh, you'll notice there are some differences visually when you first look at it but the principles are pretty much the same and in this case you'll see the final product here which is you know the animated um, things like this so I believe at the first video we went ahead and let me check something here I want to make sure that there's nothing actually animated anymore when I take you through this again uh, I'll go ahead and, and expedite what's going on here uh, by we're gonna just be animating the bone objects adding keyframes to them, linking them to the meshes, and then linking them again to the actual uh, root bone to make sure that everything is ready to go and we'll discuss a couple hierarchy things also. So with the bone selected or the root bone selected, the one that's going to drive everything, the meshes and the other two children, uh, we're going to go ahead and select it. And to make sure that I only select that, I'm going to go ahead and select my helpers up here in the selection filter and that way I'm only capable of selecting on the helper objects themselves and not the meshes. You want to do that mainly because you don't want to accidentally link a mesh to or excuse me a root object or a bone object to a mesh that you don't necessarily want to do that to. Now that being the case I will go ahead up here and select and link which shows two little uh, chain links that are together and I'm going to go ahead and turn it off to where it accepts all geometry and I'm going to select the center geometry the actual root mesh and I'm going to select that and drag it up to the root helper root bone think of it almost as the child reaching out to take the hand of the parent you want the actual mesh to be connected to the root object in this case the point helper so now if I were to select it the root is going to actually move or rotate the mesh itself and I'm gonna go ahead and do the same with these other meshes I'm gonna select and link them to their corresponding helper objects and then with the actual two point objects that are the bones I'm gonna then select them and link them to the actual center bone. So now when I select the root object it's going to move not only the meshes but also the actual corresponding bones. So they will actually move all together. These still are, each one of these are still capable of moving on their own independently based upon their pivot point but both of them are linked directly to the center root object. Now the meshes can be selected and moved out, let's say like this, or even like this, but their pivot points and animation points are still directly located within their point and helper objects. So with that said, I'm going to go ahead and make sure that I only select the helper objects. And with the center one selected, I'm going to go down to my scrub bar down here, my actual animation bar, and I'm going to right click on the part where it says 0 100. I'm going to right click on that and add a keyframe only with the rotation. So I'm going to uncheck position and scale. 0, zero is fine because we want it to start at the beginning of the of the timeline. And from there it noticed it added a keyframe right here for rotation only. It's green. And then over here where it says auto key. Toggle auto key on 
we can push that and that makes the screen active. It means that everything we do from now on when we move the scrub bar here is going to be recorded. Now the hotkey for auto key is N and you'll know it's active because you'll be a red bar around your screen. So with that being the case, another thing I want this when these rotate I want them to do it at 360 degrees exactly. So I'm going to turn, make sure my angle taps or snap toggle is on. Hotkey for that is A. And I'm going to go ahead and move the slider bar all the way to 100. Now some of you may do this. You might find that it actually looks like this. So when I rotate it 360 degrees, you can see the numbers clicking off 360. And I'll click on play. You'll notice how it speeds up and slows down. Speeds up and then once it gets to the end it slows down. Well we don't want it to do that. We want it to play clean through uh, without slowing down or speeding up. So I'm going to window around and delete just by hitting the delete key those keyframes. You have to be careful when you do this because you could accidentally delete your meshes and everything. Now you also want to make sure that you're only adding a keyframe to the actual helper objects. That's why I selected it to where we can only make it helpers. So that being said I want to make sure that uh, this little guy down here, default in and out for new keys, I want to go ahead and hold my mouse above this and move it to where it's just linear. It's just a straight red bar that goes across. That way when it starts to play the animation, it'll be the exact same speed as when it starts to finish the animation. So I'm going to right click on this again, rotation only, move my scrub bar all the way to 100, rotate this 100 or 360 degrees and hit play again. Now you'll notice it does not slow down or speed up. It plays the same speed constantly no matter what it does and that's exactly what we want. Now I can actually also, let's go back to the beginning here, and I'll right click on the point object here and go to object properties and show the trajectory. The trajectory will actually be an editable piece that will show the actual animation that's there. Now the reason it's not showing up is because it is centered right within the middle of this object. So it's rotating around a central space, in this case being dead center of our grid, triple zero, so the trajectory will not show up. But if I select these and show the project traje the trajectories, excuse me, so I selected those helper objects, object properties, and show trajectory, you'll now be able to see the trajectory of these things, which are these little lines. So as they play around those lines, you'll see that's the trajectory they're actually using. Now I'm going to hit F and go to front view and I'm going to make sure I turn off the auto key either by hitting N or by clicking the auto key button itself. So now that I have that, now we have the actual root object rotating 360 degrees and the children are actually following it in its path. I'm going to then add also the a keyframe to rotate each bone individually on either side of the root object to rotate on a different axis, on the Z axis. So I'm going to go ahead and add a keyframe to those because you'll notice there is no keyframe for those just because they're being they're following what the parent is doing. So I'm going to right click, add a rotation keyframe, go all the way to three or 100 frames, and I'm going to go ahead and rotate this 360 degrees on the x axis or z axis. And I'm going to do the same with this one. Let's go back, add keyframe. Okay, active my keyframe there. 360 degrees and 360 degrees. I'm going to do this one in an opposite direction. And I'll hit play. So you'll notice they actually do this, kind of like a Ferris, or not a Ferris wheel, but you know, a carnival ride is how they're doing it. But we can also add other keyframes. We don't have to just do it on certain axes, like on the first one where we did it on the X axis. I'm going to now go ahead and do it on the Z axis. So I'm going to go ahead and go to its 100 frame and I'm going to go ahead and rotate this again 360 degrees. And I'm going to play this animation. And I think I encountered a problem so let me just check something. I notice how this cube right here stopped moving. I'm not sure why its keyframe is in place but let me try again to make sure maybe I hit control Z and didn't realize it. Let's see. I must have. So now they're all moving independently. But we can also add another thing of information and that is rotating it this direction 360 degrees and you can see what the trajectory did that time. And so you can get a better view of it. I'll go back into perspective mode and rotate around so you can see what the actual trajectory doing is doing. Now it's more of like a uh, geosynchronous rotation. 
So there you go. And you can see how each one is following its own trajectory, in this case being the figure eight. So if I went to left view by hitting L, you'll notice it's doing an infinity loop. And that is essentially what it is doing. It's going to do an infinity loop from now until I actually stop it. So that being the case, we need to be able to see what our actual hierarchy is. Now up here where it says graph editors, I can click on that and you'll see a bunch of different views we can go to. But in this case, I'm going to go to schematic view. I'm going to close this little window here. And when this opens up, we're actually capable of seeing the actual tree layout of what's going on here. And it'll work the same way it does in your screen. The root moves everything else. Bone 2 will move the child mesh 2. Bone 1 moves child mesh 1. And the root mesh. And you'll notice there's little arrows that are there showing you exactly what's going on. It's kind of like a family tree with the root being the final parent. Consider the root mesh being like a, a, the second parent and it moves on and on and on throughout this. Now I know I went through this fairly quickly, but that does speed up um, what it is that we're doing in basic animation. And this animation is fine, whether it be a robot transforming in a Transformers movie, or machine, or even organics. Everything is based off of parent-child relationships and how these things move. There are certain things that are different within each one, but the basics of what you just set up, doing these boxes, or whatever, you could have chosen teapots, it wouldn't have mattered. The basics are the same. These are the exact basic principles of 3D animation, that is setting keyframes, parent-child relationships, and simple setting of keys. So with that, we'll finish up this video and move on to the next.